Okay, so here we have class 24. The end is near. We're going to start chapter 14 and talk about turbo machinery. And today, specifically, we're going to talk about pumps and fans. So I have uh, a cartoon here that I've used before with an impeller. With uh, wetted is getting sucked into the suction side and being thrust out through the output side of this impeller. He's being impelled. So turbo machinery, they're dynamic fluid machines that add, that's for pumps, or extract, for turbines, hydraulic power. And we really have two broad categories. We have pumps and fans, and uh, turbines and windmills. And the pumps uh, use impellers or blades uh, that do work on the fluid. And then the tangential force component and the blade motion are in the same direction. Whereas for a turbine or a windmill, the fluid does work on the blade instead. So you can see the distinction for a pump, the blade or impeller does work on the fluid. And the opposite is true. The fluid is doing work on the blade uh, when it comes to a turbine. And then the tangential force component and the blade are in opposite directions when it, for a turbine, whereas they're in the same direction for a pump or a fan. And within this, uh, these other categories, we could also define uh, the radial direction, um, which is sort of typified uh, by this guy right here. And then the um, axial direction. And so things to look for those, uh, you know, in the radial direction, the flow is perpendicular, so it's coming out that way uh, compared to the axis, which is along that way. And this is typical for centrifugal pumps uh, some turbochargers, I think most turbochargers, uh, water wheels. Okay, that's, I guess that's the only ex, uh, examples I had right in there. Uh, I said some fans, too. Not all fans, but some fans are radial. Um, axial, in line. Now, so the flow is in line with the axis right there, right? So it's flowing in that direction, and that's the in line with the axis. Um, this is so typical of propellers and most fans that you'd see. Um Propellers on ships, let's say. Gas turbines and jet engines, they are, they, they are in line, they're uh, axial. Uh, there are some pumps that are axial pumps. Uh, and then windmills we also have. Which also, by the way, I, I don't like it when we call... Uh, uh, I, 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 wind turbines, I would also in, include in there, but they're not the same thing as windmills. Uh, windmills usually milling something, which is to like grind grain or to, to cut wood. And that's not what you're doing with a wind turbine. Okay, so I added this section on pump types just for your information. Um, we're dealing with pumps today. I thought we would mention them some more. And we have really two broad categories of pumps. We have dynamic pumps and positive displacement pumps. And dynamic pumps are what we're going to talk about in turbo machinery. Uh, positive displacement pumps work on other principles. So, so we have uh, to break down dynamic pumps into centrifugal, which is what we are, are your bait. Well, we usually think most pumps are centrifugal pumps. I think it's safe to say, or we can think of them. Many, many are centrifugal pumps uh, where they use an impeller uh, to increase the velocity, radial velocity, and that using this impeller. And then uh, it gets captured in something we call a volute and turned in and that it gets slowed down and we've been able to increase the pressure because of that operation. There's also axial and fan and turbine types um, for when it comes to pumps. Um, there, there's many of these, uh, you know, as, as the picture that we had used in the previous one said. So um, on some ships, um, the force draft fan, the main force draft fans, they, were, they, they, they look very similar to these. Uh, when it comes to positive displacement, but that, that kind of the, the word positive displacement is the kind of the key to this. You could think that these pumps operate on taking a chunk of fluid and moving it because of like, we'll call it positive action, as opposed to the dynamic, uh, you know, where we're not necessarily taking a chunk of fluid here. We're, we're accelerating it, we're changing its velocity, and then we're capturing that using, you know, you could think of them as Bernoulli principles here. But in positive displacement pumps, on the other hand, we're gonna take like a chunk, and one, one very common is reciprocating, and I just, I needed a picture, so I took a, just a, a small um, air compressor. But we have large air compressors, there are all kinds of different sizes of air compressors, and they're 
they're like little engines but backwards right so like a piston driven engine um that's where the explosion is really driving the the piston whereas in when it comes to a compressor that's backwards where the piston is driving uh the, the fluid right there um on uh, some of the first some of the first ships i was on as a cadet many years ago it was already an old ship they actually had um piston pumps where there were the there would be steam on one side and then there would be uh, feed water on the other uh, that was feed water to the boiler and these were like emergency pumps or or pumps when you were uh, 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 just getting so you didn't have like electricity you could uh, anyway um, it's old old school stuff but the, you you can have actually piston driven pumps uh, for for water but it's just not very common um, lobe and screw pumps I, I grouped those together. Um, we might have a type of uh, uh, so, some type of mechanical shape uh, that rotates, and because of that rotation, it, it, it traps like a chunk in uh, a fluid in it, and, and it's, it forces it to move down uh, from one one position to another position. Uh, a screw pump here you go like you can see that the fluid as this thing rotates it has to go here um, both of these uh, and, and actually many positive displacement pumps really rely on good seals uh, between sections like the good sealing surfaces uh, like they, they might be like piston rings in a, uh, a reciprocating pump right here uh, to make sure that fluid doesn't leak by and because of that it's positively moved um, and I also included a diaphragm pump in here because it's a very common type of pump. Uh, it's useful because if you have compressed air, now you can move some fluid. And uh, they're, they're, these, they're portable. These get used a lot on ships uh, as extra handy things to have around. Now, I've just really narrowed down these categories. There are a ton of other kinds of pumps. Uh, but this is what we're going to talk about is dynamic pumps and specifically I'm going to stick to um, my uh, uh, the good old centrifugal pump is the main focus of today I asked this question uh, what is the how do turbo machines work and uh, I'll ask this question do you remember class 5 14 and it was really Reynolds transport theorem applied to angular momentum to angmom. And uh, there was a lot of different um, equations that we had in, during that class. Uh, but the main one that I'm going to focus on is one that I brought up. And I'm not sure I put enough emphasis on it here. But it was Euler's turbo machinery uh, equation. It was a turbo machine equation. Turbo machine equation. That looks close enough. And um, back then it was equation uh, 657. And now we're going to find it in our book at equation um, 14. 14 so if you're looking at your single book and it says that the shaft torque right so this is the sum of the moments uh was what we had when we had reynolds transport theorem applied to angular momentum so this is torque and we have m dot times r2 v2 tangential only minus r1 uh, v1 tangential right there and so a couple things of interest here we note that we have this mass flow times a velocity and if you recall correctly that would be um what we generally got for thrust right so linear momentum was mass flow times velocity and that but an angular momentum uh, we had to have uh the moment of that linear momentum so we have this r term um placed in there and uh, th these need to be perpendicular to each other. So it makes sense that it's only t the tangential component right here. So like in this view right here, this would be our R2. And right there, this is a different book symbols for this. But we have, this is going to be R, the V2 
in the tangential direction. Then the same thing direction right here, right? So those are perpendicular to each other. We're going to talk about this these triangles in the next slide um, over. Um, we, I'm not going to deal much with the axial version, but there's a, also the, a, a similar thing that's taking place uh, for the fan uh, where we have the uh, uh, tangential velocity, although we we can't see the radius because it's down into the page, right, um, a, a, away from us, this perpendicular. Um, one thing uh, that we're going to really uh, need to focus on when working through to get to these velocities up here is we need to take a look at triangles. Uh, they're really turbo machinery's best buddy and uh, a necessary part of dealing with any when you when you deal with the specifics of turbo machinery you have to deal with velocity triangles because there's a rel this thing is moving so it's got a velocity in um because of rotation let's just say it's going to have a velocity that way right there which is going to be the angular velocity times this radius right same thing true right there and then it's also going to have a relative velocity. So um, it's going to, that's, the relative velocity is going to be the velocity that the blade sees or the blade thinks that it sees, right? Right. And so these in a, uh, a centrifugal pump, there's going to have these uh, like in, internal blades right here. Note, you'll, you'll note them. You'll see. Let's move these back, I guess. This wasn't the best way to approach this thing. Okay, I, I guess I'll, I'll show them in the next slide. I'm sorry, I'll show the impeller on the next slide. But it has uh, these blades uh, right here. And there's a relative velocity that's going to be tangential to them. And then there's going to be an actual velocity, right? So, uh, because here's the relative velocity, and here's the velocity of the motion. So here's the real velocity. And that real velocity is going to have components as well. So it could be kind of confusing. So the velocity triangles help to clear that up. All right. So here we go. We talk about a centrifugal pump. And here's where you might want to keep back. We need to back up to this point right here uh, as we go through here to try to really uh, focus. So um, here's what the side view of the centrifugal pump. And right here is the impeller. And uh, the impeller spins and it will produce a uh, normal velocity that's coming outwards, perpendicular from uh, the, the, this out, outside surface right here. And we could find what the flow rate is if we knew what these normal velocities were. So here's the inside one, we'll call it V1, N. And here's the outside one. And I've only drawn the outside one here. So let me, let me fix him, call it 2N, two, two there you go. And, or the other way around, where you could also, if we knew what the volumetric flow rate was, we could find uh, that, that. And that's often the case for uh, types of problems we might want to establish for a given flow rate and then start working through there. So there's a known velocity that we could have in two different positions. And so here is a, a very complex and hard to decipher uh, figure. So let's walk through it. Uh, one part at a time. So the first velocity that's going to be pretty easy to find is going to be um, this motion velocity. I don't know what the better way to call it. I don't want to call it a tangential velocity, although it is tangential. It's not the one that we really, really want, right? Because if you recall the Euler equation, turbo machinery equation, that was a tangential velocity. And that's our main goal. You can notice that he's up here, right there, that, that guy. And they don't even show him in here, but you'll, we'll see him in a second. Yeah. Um, so this is pretty easy to find. This this uh, it's because the thing is rotating at a given uh, angular velocity. Just multiply it by either r1 or r2, and you can get what the motion of that point on the uh, inlet or the outlet of the impeller is. The next is going to be this relative velocity. And we might not know that value, but we can know what its angle is going to be. And that's going to be tangential to this blade, right? So this, this internal blade, that's right here. 
and we might be able to design a uh, a pump for particular traits that we'll mention here soon i hope i'll remember to mention um but with that we form a triangle right uh, um it looks like a trapezoid here but we could see that it's actually a triangle over here if we go ahead and bring that uh relative velocity over right over here the same thing true right there oh i'm sorry i made a mistake there 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 you go right there yeah that's the right one so you get this there there you can see there's our triangles we we're calling them triangles but we drew a trapezoid it makes it confusing um right here is the actual right so uh here's our actual velocity and once again, we might not know that, but we can uh, work backwards if we know what this velocity is going to be and, uh, and and find that, that normal velocity. And then from that, we can use to find the tangential right here. So here's the equations uh, that we would use, and it's really just applying these uh, triangles uh, to try to find them, right? So we're going to say, and we're going to we're going to take away the uh, uh, tangential a portion of this tangential velocity right here, and the tangential velocity is going to be that amount right there, if that makes sense, right? That's going to be uh, the component that we were able to find, and it's all about basically the geometry of this triangle. That's the way we're. That's the reason why we're able to write out this equation. So if we know this normal uh, velocity and we know what this angle is, and then we know the RPM, we're able to get these tangential velocities. That's both the inlet and the outlet. Oh, and by the way, we can design this beta if we were careful to have just the right angle so that uh, um, it, there, there's no tangential component to that. That means that uh, uh, it's almost entirely gonna be a normal velocity uh, of this piece coming in. And that might be a benefit to us because the equation that we want right here is gonna be this outlet minus this inlet. Right, so if we can minimize this inlet velocity right here by minim by, by changing that beta, we can get more power out of this. Uh, more, uh, this is they're calling this shaft power. I'd actually call this hydraulic power. Personally, that's what I think we should call it. Um, and then also from this, we can um, we know that if we have. Uh, uh, from this, we can get head, right? Because we could find we could, from head. We if we just divide head by um, the specific uh, uh, specific weight and the uh, volumetric flow rate, we could find what the head is. Remember, okay. So just as you know, another another way to look at hydraulic uh, power was gamma h vol uh, uh, volume dot. Right, so if we divide uh, this by gamma and V dot, which is this and here, and you can see that we have our of G, we're able to find what the head is that we produce. And that's usually what we want to know when it comes to a pump. So I'm not gonna cover the axial um, flow much, um, only to say that, well, some veins, so not every fan, but some fans actually have stators. So we'll have like a rotating part and a stationary part, and we might want to capture the outlet velocity and t turn it in. Like here's, uh, we might want to capture the outlet and then turn it back into uh, an outlet of here, excuse me, and then turn it into um, entirely uh, output, right? So we can in increase uh, uh, the, the, f the pressure. So, uh, but we're going to stick with the centrifugal pump and I'm going to have an example in the next uh, in the next slide, in the next uh, video, I should say. Or maybe I need to, um, no, there's a couple other things I probably want to say first. Is that true? All right, so I'm going to uh, pick this up in the next video because I'm already at the 20-minute mark. So see you in the next video.